Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. We give you all the praise and all the glory and all the honor. Jesus is in the house this morning. He is here. Like I said, in the last few weeks, I have seen him three times. As I was ministering last week, uh, two weeks ago, uh, to a girl with anorexia and in terrible, uh, difficult young girl. And as I laid my hand upon her, Jesus appeared on my right hand side and he stretched out his hands towards this girl. And, uh, you know, I've heard, I, we've heard the scripture that God is love. And the Bible says that Jesus was moved with compassion. Everywhere in the scripture you find Jesus moved by compassion. Compassion is the name of the Bible. Okay, if you have no compassion, you, you need to get saved. Hallelujah. Because the Bible is full of compassion. Our God is different from any other God. Because our God is a God of compassion. As a father pitied his children, the Bible says. God pities us. Hallelujah. God so loved the world. God is love. But you see, I knew it theoretically. But when I began to pray for this girl with anorexia, Jesus appeared on my right hand side. And I saw his hand also touching this girl. And one thing I know it was Jesus because... The compassion was so much I could not handle it myself. I have never experienced that the love that Jesus had for this girl who was on drugs, who was anorexia, who was what we call messed up, dysfunctional, so many of them around, so many young people. And I never never experienced that the love that Jesus had for this young, young person. Young people out there, God has so much love. You see, if you are not winning souls, you might as well die and go to heaven because really speaking, you are not living the, the Zoe life. You see, I, I travel to a lot of churches. There are a lot of sad Christians, a lot of depressed Christians because of this scripture I'll tell you. Because many of them have been caught up in materialism. Yes. Even I too was caught up in materialism. I bought a four-bedroom house and bought this new TV screen. New, new, new TV. It lasted, the joy lasted about three days, if that. More like three hours. Now, somebody said to me, but this is too fat. You have to get the slim one. <laughs> first, screen, first Timothy chapter 6, verse 6 says, But godliness with contentment is great gain. For we brought nothing into this world, and it is certain we can carry nothing out. But having food and clothes, let us there be content. But they that will be rich fall into temptation and a snare and into many foolish and hurtful lusts which drown men in destruction and perdition. For the love of money is a root of all evil which while some covered after they have erred from the faith and pierced themselves with many sorrows. But thou, O man of God, flee these things and follow after righteousness, godliness, faith, Love, patience, and meekness. Fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold on eternal life where unto thou art called, also called, and hast professed a good profession before, before many witnesses. Now, I'm not saying that I don't like prosperity. I love prosperity. Any money that you don't want, I will receive today. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. I love nice things. But I, I will not allow the nice things to control my life anymore. Amen. I got, your pastor knows, I got into circle of people. When my Mercedes was one year old, I was told it's too old. Change your car, I was told. I was mixing with people like that. And I, you know, it's, it's very important who you mix with. I hang around people like Pastor Kofi. You know, and Pastor Agu, and I, 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 I you know, I, I rub shoulders with Benny Hinn on the TV. I'm, <laughs> you know, I, I'm going to Norwich, hallelujah. Amen. I said, I want, a, I want a seat as close as possible, hallelujah. Amen. You know, Elijah, Elijah, who you hang with? Oh, nice. Amen. And this materialism, it caught me. But you know, I remember how I got saved. Having come from a Hindu background, I was not attracted by materialism. I, when, the, when I met these Christians, they had peace and they had joy. That's what attracted me. They had peace. See, it's no use us trying to compete with Beckham. He'll beat you any day. Your new car, your new house, he, he lives in a palace. So don't try to impress Beckham with your new car. Impress him with the peace and joy in the middle of tsunami. Hallelujah. What people are looking for is peace and joy. 
and the power. The power of God. Hallelujah. My phone, my phone rings all the time. A lady from Cambridge heard about me. She, she had a little child. That the child had, had eczema from the head to toe. So much pain. Skin coming off. Terrible. Been to every doctor. No cure. The little girl said to her mother, seven years of age, she said, Mommy, take me to a preacher who can pray for me. How did the little girl know that? I don't know. She got one of my flies. She says, can I come and see you? Came to my house. I said to the little girl, I said, do you want to be healed right now? She says, yes, I want clear skin. She had faith. I, made, I prayed for her. She was instantly healed. Amen. A few days later, her skin was like baby. People are desperate. Huh? And I just feel in my heart that there are a lot of believers who are depressed. You know why you're depressed? Because the Bible says, seek ye first. You know? All heaven rejoices when one sinner comes to Christ. I love, I'm, I am so enjoying my Christian life. Ooh, wow. You are joy unspeakable. Mm. I enjoy. Of course, I am in the flow of what I'm supposed to be. See, I was pastoring. Pastor, even Pastor preached for me one time, uh, a couple of times. You know, he came to my church. You know, and I, was, I used to find it hard. Pastoring, oh, yo, it was a difficult job. I'm glad uh, Jezebel came and destroyed my church. Yeah. I bless her, hallelujah. Because, he had, because God used, he said, devil, he said, devil thinks he's doing something. God will use it yes. to bring you into your destiny. Yes. I love what I do. I love the anointing of God. I love to flow with the Holy Ghost. I love to win souls. There is nothing better than being in the right place where God is. If God is calling you to be an usher, Give it 120%. Because that is where your joy is. Hallelujah. Joy unspeakable and full of... You know, John said, I must decrease and he must increase. And that is the, the secret of a fantastic Zoe Christian life. He must increase and I must decrease. You see, there is a life that is wonderful. There is a life full of power. There are certain keys, of course, that you have to knew. You know, the, this book is an alive book. I'll give you a testimony. My young brother, who was a believer, you know, after I, I didn't have church, he couldn't settle in the church, so he was just backsliding. Well, he was just not going to church. And uh, one day, two years ago, he got very sick. Temperature like malaria, 40 degrees, cold, hot, cold, hot, cold. So he thought it was malaria, you know, because we are from Africa. And uh, some, some, some were somewhere hidden, some germs. So anyhow, the doctor says, sorry, this is not malaria. I don't know what's wrong. Senior doctors. Went to senior doctors. Said, I don't know what's wrong. Go to hospital. When North Park Hospital, a consultant came. He says, I don't know what's wrong. They did ex- every test. They couldn't find any cure. Finally, to cut a long story short, they called the professor of medicine at North Park Hospital. And by this time, my mother had called me and said, your brother is dying because 40 degrees temperature, you know, up and down. He couldn't eat, he couldn't sleep. I mean, the guy was dying. My young brother. So my mother phoned me. I said, you better pray for him. You see, my, all these Asians, they, they phoned me. <laughs> they worship Hare Krishna, but they phoned me. <laughs> my brother called me yesterday because he's, he became a grandfather yesterday. But he's the one who was on the committee that built the temple at Nisden, the Hindu temple. He's on a committee. But yesterday he phoned me because a few days he was so worried about the babies. I said, don't worry, she's be fine. He said, they believe what I tell them. Amen. So yesterday he says, oh, thank you. He said, tell your God, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> tell your God, thank you. <laughs> so this young brother of mine is dying. So my family, they phoned me. Please pray for him. So I prayed. And the Holy Ghost said, tell him to read his Bible. I said, excuse me, Lord. The man is dying. He hasn't got, to do, he hasn't got time to do Bible study. <laughs> the man needs a miracle. Hallelujah. But you know, when you know the Holy Ghost, you better obey. I was reading, I was reading, um, my favorite, Wigglesworth. My God. 
When I read the Apostle of Faith, because it's like Jesus. Same as Jesus. Ooh, I, I pray for a Wigglesworth to this morning. Somebody, God can raise somebody here to turn Kilman, to turn London. That God is no respect of persons. God can just raise you up if you are willing to pay the price. And so I rang my brother on the mobile. He was in the isolation ward. You know where they have the AIDS patients. It was dark. It was scary. Nobody near him. He says, I mean, they don't know this disease. The, the professor said, we don't know what disease you've got. So we have to keep you isolated because you might spread all over Britain. <laughs> they'll miss Kilburn, but they're all over Britain. Hallelujah. <laughs> because it's anointing, yeah. Glory to God. Can you feel the anointing? Amen. Open up your heart. Let Jesus touch you today. Open up your heart. And let God do something for you. Don't worry about your problems, sir. I can look at your face and tell you what you're thinking. So I said to my brother, God says, read your Bible. When a man is drowning, he will do, he will, he will, they will hang from a chandelier. They will do anything. I pray for the sick. If I tell them to jump, they will jump. He couldn't find, he found his wife's Bible. His wife is a very student of the Bible. Both came from Hindu background. Came through, got saved through my ministry. He got hold of his Bible. Gideon Bible that she stole from the hospital. <laughs> she got sa- my, my sister-in-law got saved in, at Norfolk Park Hospital. She found Gideon's Bible. She stole it. I said, steal it in Jesus' name. <laughs> <laughs> With my blessing. And she's reached that to this day. A devout Hindu she was. So he took her Bible and began to read. Within three days, he called me. He says, I'm healed. He got healed reading his Bible. But you know when he was, you know what he said? It's Pastor Kofi, this really struck me. He said to me, now this guy was under in my ministry and he said to me, very strange. He says, Ash, you never told me that the Bible is God. He says, the Bible is God. Then I thought, yeah. John 1, in the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God. The Word was God. Hallelujah. I said, you are right. He says, you never told me. I said, I'm sure I told you that. <laughs> But I didn't say that way that the Bible is God. So the number one key. You must read your Bible every day. You know for me when I'm, I move in the power of God. And the reason I see miracles is because I read the Gospels. If you want to move in power, you must read the, the, the miracles of Jesus. I tell people who are sick. If you are sick and you've been prayed for and prayed for and prayed for and you can't get healed, you know what you should do? You should read every miracle that Jesus did every day. One day I started doing, I I read Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. I read so many miracles. My mind was full of miracles. So when I closed my eyes, I could just see Jesus and miracles and crowd. Mind was changed. So when I pray for the sick, when I close my eyes and I pray for the sick, I just imagine Jesus praying for the sick. Amen. You know, in the, if you think about it, in the multitudes, the Bible says great multitudes. You know, he, what, did they have sin? Did they have faith? Did they believe? I mean, you know, all these books we read, about all this teaching, I'll give you an example. I had a, a prayer line of people, and there were some strong believers cancer, diabetes, and there's so much sickness, my God. And among believers. And there was this Indian guy. He had a cartilage problem, both knees. He was having an operation. So the doctor, who's a friend of mine, Deepak, his name is, the doctor's a Christian. He says, look, before I operate on both of your knees, why Ash is having a meeting? Let's go to Ash's meeting. Perhaps you will save yourself an operation. <laughs> So he came to the meeting. Now, I didn't know nothing. So this man was there. So I said, look, the moment I lay my hands upon you, the power of God is going to hit you. Amen. And you'll be healed. So I was praying for different people. You know, some people, you are praying, oh, God. I didn't like praying for brick walls. Nothing is going in. <laughs> I tell you. But when I came to this Indian man, I laid my hand just like that. He jumped up. I'm healed. I said, hang on. I haven't prayed. <laughs> He said, no, 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 I'm healed, I'm healed, I'm healed. And he jumps on the platform, he's going, he's, he's going bananas. 
instant miracle without prayer. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Because you see, God is here. I don't know if you, but God is already here. Yes. And He is here if you will open up. It's like a radio, you know. If you bring a radio, if you turn on the radio, do you know right now there's TV camera pictures here? There are radio signals here. Yes, there's sound here. There's pictures here, but you need the receiver. So your receiver, open up your receiver Amen. this morning. Let God impact you because Amen. it's important that you are impacted. When Ronald Bonke prayed for me, the prayers of a righteous man avails much. My wife will tell you. Do you know there was a time when I was pastoring and I had no burden for the lost? In central London, nice church, nice chairs, pastor, remember, yeah. nice carpet. Nice car, nice salary. Few, I mean, nice people, a few ugly ones, but general. <laughs> I always wish for a nice church with no problems. Doesn't exist. Church is like a hospital. All the weirdos come, praise God. We deliver them, hallelujah. Huh? But I had no burden for the lost. I, you know, I can't even believe it. To this day, I think about it. I was pastoring, but I had no... I had no Burden for the lost. I don't know if I even preach about evangelism. Maybe once in a while. <laughs> and God spoke to my wife. said, pray for your husband. Doesn't have a heart for the lost. Oh. What a shame. I feel so embarrassed. I said, God, I had everything. The building was costing us £150,000 a year. Yes, Tottenham Court Road. I mean, we were doing fine. A nice BMW. You know, I was doing fine, but the world was going to hell. I was invited to a um, full gospel businessman. You know, I go anywhere now. You know, and we suffer. One thing I'm going to tell you, we, my wife and I, we suffer now for the gospel. Forget the hairstyle. Forget the hairstyle. I mean, okay, today I wear a tie, but it's not important. I can't imagine Apostle Paul worrying about his hairstyle. He was in the deep. He was being flogged to death, stoned to death. Where is Hester? Tell me. <laughs> we got to move away from these things. Don't be impressed by these things. Sure, have a nice Hester. Don't come in like a, uh, uh, you know, zombie. <laughs> Comb your hair. Of course. I'm not, say- <laughs> I'm not saying just show up in your pajamas. I mean, you know. <laughs> But there's a limit. There's a limit. What is important is what you're doing with your life. Following the Lord Jesus Christ. And you know, people always say to me, people always think that if you give your all to Jesus that you will lose out. You won't. It's a lie of the devil. When you give your all to Jesus. You see, before uh, Reinhard prayed for me, my thinking was, If God wanted me to go to India, I would want first class air ticket, hotel. I want chauffeur. I want air conditioning in a car before I even think about going to India. That was my attitude. That's why there was no altitude. (laughs) I was not getting even invitation to India. (laughs) Hallelujah. And the Lord said, I, I preached this message in, in, in Jesus' house, and I tell you, it was wonderful. But what it was, was, I was, you see, Jesus was Savior. Jesus was not Lord. When you make Jesus Lord, if he says, go to India and preach in a village, scamp under a tree, you should say, okay, Lord. You have to surrender. When you surrender all, Dance where the joy is. Amen. Have you heard of this joke? This guy was getting baptized. And he's, he's going down in the water. But his hand was sticking out of the water. Have you heard that joke? It's a very good one. His hand was out of the water. Everything else was being baptized. And in his hand was his wallet. <laughs> the wallet didn't get baptized. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> I think he was Indian. (laughs) No, when we are baptized, we are buried. 
and folks, at, I'm, I'm telling you, it's, I have no other agenda here. I'm, I haven't come here for anything but to encourage you that to serve godliness with contentment yeah. is of great gain. Yes. There is a Zoe life. Yeah. There is. We, we've heard many messages on it. But nobody, I, I find very few people living it. Why? Because we're not surrendered all. Mm. Oh. Mm. You know, surrender means reading your Bible every day. That is the part of it, surrender. So I don't feel like reading my Bible. No, you have to. Amen. My little girl doesn't like vegetables. I mean, I should change my confession. She loves vegetables from now on. <laughs> I always say that. But she knows. No vegetables, no ice cream. <laughs> You know, vegetables come before ice cream. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. But this word will do you good. Amen. 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 Number two, you must pray. Amen. Prayer meeting should be full. Amen. How can you impact Kilburn if you don't go to prayer meeting? Oh, I want to win souls. You don't go to prayer meeting. You're wasting your time. That's right. It won't work. I pray. You know how long I pray? Two hours a day. In tongues. Every day. If I do three, oh, it's hard. But two hours is necessary to do what I do. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And if you're not praying an hour a day in tongues, you're really wasting your time. You might as well quit. Backslide. <laughs> Amen. Amen. And then, key number three, you must fellowship. Fellowship with the Holy Ghost. You must fellowship with the Holy Spirit. Because He is... You know, people don't know. God, Jesus sent him to be a helper. Yes. Hmm? Jesus did not send help. He sent helper. He didn't send comfort. He said he sent comforter. That tells you there's a person. Hello, somebody. Huh? He didn't say, I'm sending you help. I'm sending you a helper. Another comforter, John, he says. Amen. You must fellowship with the Holy Spirit. You know, I feel a teaching anointing. It's coming on me, you know. <laughs> I'm teaching. Praise God. <laughs> you see, I can do all things through Christ. I must decrease. But he must increase. So, I really sense in my heart, forget materialism. You know, I'm not saying forget prosperity. I'm not saying that. Don't, don't misunderstand me. But do not focus right. on a big car, a big house. Sure, if, it, if it's there, praise God. Enjoy it. Amen. You know, somebody gave Rand Bonke uh, uh, the best car there was in Germany. He was, the doorbell rang and somebody dropped a set of keys. He picked up the keys, went outside. It was a nice BM, top of the range. You know, his reaction was, he says, God, I don't need a car. What am I going to do with this one? Sold it. Put the money in the gospel. Amen. He said, I will sell the last brick on my house for a last soul. Amen. Look at attitude. Mm. I love that man. Amen. You know what? He is on stage, he's off stage. Lives for the lost. Lives for the heartbeat of God. That's where the peace is. That's where the joy is. Do you know, I remember, I remember a man of God. In his early days of his ministry, he had, you know, he only had one suit and some of the, that suit had patches. But the man who spent all day with God. And the man was anointed. The first time I fell down under the power of God was under this man. I never believed in falling down. I said, no, no, no. They're pushing down. <laughs> Some do, you know what I mean? <laughs> Some that have no anointing, they say, Kah. But this man, I, I said, I'm going to stand, you know. <laughs> Having done all. <laughs> uh, let's see. And I rem- the last thing I remember, I'm standing. The next thing, I'm on the floor. How I got there, I don't know. <laughs> then I realized the power of God is real. Amen. Hallelujah. Yes. Amen. But this man had only one suit and patches on that suit. But, you know, I felt like sitting next to him because there was something on him. I felt like to be near him. You know, if you, if you come somebody, you don't feel like being near him because there are demons there, move away. <laughs> or fornication or adultery or lies, just move away. But some people, you want to be, you just want to hug them. What is it? It's God on them. God is upon them. And this man, he was very poor. He was an evangelist, didn't have a lot of money. 
But he was a happy man. He was a man full of joy, full of peace, and full of the power of God. But you know what happened? His ministry began to grow. Money began to come. You know, because and money follows anointing. You see it. There are men of God who are doing, who are having cell group these days. Money follows anointing. Amen. And it's, you know, sex and money is the, 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 the two things that are the downfall. So this man began to grow ministry and money began to follow. And I noticed over the years the lack of anointing, the lack of the joy and the manipulation and all the scheming. You know, when there's no anointing, you know, when I used to preach, Pastor, in the old days, I used to shout a lot. You know why? There was no anointing. I had to scream. But when you have anointing, you can speak quietly. You know, Catherine Kuhlman was preaching. Catherine Kuhlman, I love the eye. When I, when I get to heaven, Jesus, the Apostle Paul, and next one is Catherine Kuhlman. I want to meet you. Though she was a bit weird, you know, she used to wear glass shoes and all that. Never mind all that. But she had anointing. Look at the fruit of her ministry, Benny That's Hinn. Right. That's right. Yeah. Seven million in India. Wow. In India, you know it's the last days. If you get seven million in India, it is the last days. Amen. And uh, she was preaching one day, and a demon possessed man broke through. I think how many ashes? They couldn't hold him. You know? And he rushed to the platform. And she's a woman. You know, she's very skinny. Mm -hmm. She has long fingernails. The man rushed up. She just looked at him. Quietly, she said, How dare you? Pow! Man fell. That was it. Power. So when you hear preachers screaming, (laughs) 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 Hallelujah, somebody! God is a real God. Hallelujah. And you, you see, God is no respecter of persons. You could understand. It is up to you how much of God you want. Paul John says, I must decrease, he must increase. The more you decrease, the more God can increase in your life. How much time are you willing? How much time are you willing to give to God? Hallelujah. I've been told 10 minutes, praise God. I'll keep to my time. Or the pastor said, don't worry, just go. (laughs) Hallelujah. You know, I know we are having a good laugh, but what I'm preaching is a very serious message. It's up to you where you want to be with God. See, there's so much peer pressure these days. You have to stay away from peer pressure. And spend time with God. Amen. Amen. See, what is in the pulpit is reveal what has been spent in the secret place. Amen. Amen? When there's no anointing in the pulpit, there's no secret place. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So, but there's a sacrifice. But yet, godliness with contentment is great gain. Amen. You know, people are, a lot of people, a lot of Christians have got caught in the living, in the now. But you know, when I read my Bible, it's always talking about the living for, investing for the future in heaven. Hallelujah. So don't get caught up in living for the now. If you don't have, if you're still driving Nissan, don't worry. Enjoy it. But have peace and joy. The guy who's going to BMW, maybe he's got huge credit cards. They're all chasing him. He looks fine from the outside. But he might be dying on the inside. You at least, you've got Nissan, but you've got your feet up. Praise God. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Enjoy your life. Because you see, if you're not enjoying your life, you cannot attract no souls. They look at your face and say, thank you. I have enough problems. I was attracted by the peace and joy. You know, I was in a Punjabi church a couple of weeks ago, three weeks ago. Punjabi church. In, you know, I go to Punjabi church. In July, I went to Arabic church. It's been good to be evangelist, you know. Meet all kinds of food. and Hey, it's wonderful. And in this Punjabi church, you know, the lady, 
um, she had spent all day cooking because she knew we were coming. So after church, we went to her house. My, the curries. Mm. <laughs> she, she had spent all day. I mean, there was food galore. But you know one thing I noticed about her? Even though she'd been working so hard, she had, I think she's missed church because she had to do all the work and clean the house and guests were coming, you know, all the church, half the church was there. And yet the joy on her. I said, I looked at her, I said, ooh. I said, I knew just by looking at her, I said, you're a good woman. Some people, you look at them, you see the devil. <laughs> Straight away. And they say, I'm born again. Ah, wow. <laughs> but this woman, I looked at her, I said, I knew she was a good woman. A heart full of Jesus. Amen. 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 My time is really running fast. Keep going. Hallelujah. I'd like to pray for the people. Is that okay? Sharon, come to the keyboard. I want to pray for you. Because, you know, I can preach, you know, and we're enjoying it. But I want the Holy Ghost.